Good morning, I'm Taylor Wilson, and today is Tuesday, April 9th, 2024. This is The Excerpt. Today, a look at Trump's latest comments on abortion. Plus, a judge rejects his effort to delay the hush money trial, and President Joe Biden announces new student loan debt relief. Former President Donald Trump said yesterday in a video posted to his Truth Social platform that states should choose their own abortion policy. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks or some will have more conservative than others. And that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. You must follow your heart or, in many cases, your religion or your faith. To help put those comments in context, I spoke with USA Today national political correspondent David Jackson. David, thanks for making the time today. Hey, thanks for having me. So, David, what did we hear from Trump about abortion in this video posted to social media yesterday? Well, it's basically his effort to assure supporters that he is against abortion, but also to assure moderates that he's not in favor of a national ban on abortion and that states should decide the issue. He's kind of trying to uh, have the issue both ways, I would say. And how do yesterday's comments compare with his approach historically on this issue? Back in the 1990s, when he first started talking about running for president as a Reform Party candidate, he said he was pro-choice. He said he, he didn't support abortion, but that he felt like it's an issue that the government shouldn't be involved in. Over the years, he gradually changed his mind. And when he ran for president in 2016, he was very eager to get the support of religious conservatives who opposed abortion. So he basically promised them to appoint uh, conservative justices to the Supreme Court who would overturn Roe versus Wade. And that's exactly what happened. When he was in office, he got to appoint three Supreme Court judges, and they formed the core of the coalition that uh, struck down abortion rights back in 2022. Well, now, lo and behold, abortion has become a political issue, and Trump seems to feel like that it's hurting Republican candidates. So he's kind of inching back from his 2016 position by saying that I'm not going to comment on any federal abortion ban. We should just leave it to the individual states to decide what their abortion policy should be. These latest comments from Trump, how do they compare with President Joe Biden on this issue? And are we hearing from the president or other Democrats in response to this video? President Biden and the Democrats are are four square behind abortion rights. In fact, they don't support virtually any restrictions on the practice. And they've decided to make this a litmus test, a key issue in the 2024 election. They are pro-choice. They support abortion rights. And they have built almost their entire campaign around the idea that Trump is the one who is putting abortion rights at risk. They emphasize that Trump is the one who appointed the Supreme Court justice to overturn Roe versus Wade. And despite what he says, when he says it, he is the one who's most responsible for the threat to abortion rights in America these days. You know, David, Trump is also getting some flack from abortion opponents after these comments. Uh, what are they saying? How are they responding? It's a long list, and, you know, including a lot of right to life groups and even his former vice president, Mike Pence, who've come out and said that Trump is getting kind of squishy on the abortion issue. And their argument is that it should be that they oppose abortion and it should be banned everywhere. And that means Congress should take action. Trump doesn't want to go that far. So they feel like he's gone soft on the issue. And they've been very critical of uh, the president's comments. You know, the timing of this video is of note, David. Why did Trump post it now? And what can that tell us about really how crucial this abortion issue is for the upcoming election? There's no easy explanation for it. The one that the campaign gives is the, the abortion issue really surfaced last week when the Florida Supreme Court cleared the way for a referendum on abortion rights in that state in November. Uh, The Democrats really highlighted this, and they feel like it's going to help their voter turnout in Florida and may even give them a chance to carry the state. So a lot of reporters began asking Trump what he thinks about that and to again ask him what his current position on abortion is. Trump responded almost offhandedly, well, you know what, I'll have an announcement to make next week. Well, the next week came on early Monday morning when he released his five-minute video on his Truth Social account. I can't help but think that he decided to do this on Monday because that was the day of the eclipse and everybody's attention was focused on that. So it was kind of an easy way for him to, to get his position out there and not have too much attention put on it. David Jackson covers national politics for USA Today. Thank you, David. Oh, thank you. Meanwhile, a New York appeals judge yesterday rejected Trump's emergency effort to delay his upcoming hush money trial until a decision was made on his request to move the case out of Manhattan. Trump is scheduled to face trial April 15th on 34 felony counts of falsifying business records to cover up a $130,000 hush money payment to adult film actress Stormy Daniels. 
She said she had a sexual encounter with him. Trump denies Daniel's claim and has pleaded not guilty to the charges. In his Monday request for a pause in the case, Trump argued that a fair and impartial jury cannot be selected right now based on prejudicial pretrial publicity. He said the trial should be put on hold until after a New York appeals court rules on his request for the case to be moved to another jurisdiction. Appellate Judge Lizbeth Gonzalez rejected the delay request. The Vatican yesterday denounced gender-affirming surgeries and what it called gender theory. In a highly anticipated document called Infinite Dignity, the Vatican's doctrine office argued, quote, all attempts to obscure reference to the ineliminable sexual difference between man and woman are to be rejected, unquote. Pope Francis ordered the publication of the message and approved its contents last month. Francis has distinguished his time as Pope by reaching out to LGBTQ plus communities and blessing same-sex marriages. This week's document noted the church's repudiation of discrimination based on sexuality, saying, quote, it should be denounced as contrary to human dignity, the fact that in some places not a few people are imprisoned, tortured, and even deprived of the good of life solely because of their sexual orientation, unquote. Still, the moment marks a painful one for LGBTQ plus Catholic people. New Ways Ministry, an organization that advocates for LGBTQ plus Catholics, said in a statement that the Vatican's document, quote, fails terribly by offering transgender and non-binary people not infinite but limited human dignity, unquote. The document also addressed surrogacy, a practice that the church said violates the dignity of the child under its doctrine. President Joe Biden is promising student loan relief in a new plan. I spoke with USA Today breaking news and education reporter Zach Shermley about the move and why Biden announced it now. Zach, it's always a pleasure having you on. Thanks so much for having me, Taylor. So, Zach, President Joe Biden has announced a new plan for student loan debt forgiveness. What's in this plan and who would it apply to? It's a big deal. It could potentially affect more than 30 million Americans, according to the administration. So there are a few key components to this plan I think people ought to be paying attention to here. The first piece of this has to do with interest or the price people pay to borrow money. For many Americans with student loans, interest has made their loans balloon past the original amount of money they took out. Under this plan, Biden says he's going to wipe out at least some of that interest for some 23 to 25 million Americans. And if you make less than $120,000 a year as an individual and are enrolled in something called SAVE, which is the president's income-driven repayment plan, you could see all that interest go away. That's the piece of this that could come soonest. Now, if you've been paying down your loans for more than 20 years, you could also get your loans fully forgiven. But all in all, the White House estimates more than 10 million borrowers could get some $5,000 or more in relief eventually. And Zach, just refresh us here. What student loan debt has Biden erased already? And how would this new plan compare? So Biden has already used several other creative levers to relieve roughly $146 billion in student loans for about 4 million Americans. That includes roughly $46 billion for nearly a million borrowers on plans based on their incomes. There's also about $63 billion for another roughly a million borrowers through fixes to what's called the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program. That's a program for teachers, firefighters, and other people who work in public service or into jobs. This relief, though, is pretty different because it multiplies the amount of people who could be impacted by quite a bit. You know, this latest relief, Zach, what do critics say about this plan? And will the courts ultimately allow this move? I know we've previously seen debt cancellation held up in court. So the administration is confident this plan stands on firmer legal ground than the proposal that was struck down last summer, but still court challenges are likely. Biden's conservative opponents have been poised at pretty much every turn to sue the administration over its student loan forgiveness efforts. Last month, for instance, Republican attorneys general in about a dozen red states sued in federal court to stop save that income driven repayment plan of the president's. And when news began circulating this last Friday that Biden was going to be hinting at more student debt relief, critics were 
quick to pounce. And Republicans in particular say all this stuff is happening at the expense of the rollout of a new college financial aid form called the FAFSA, which has really been bungled. And, you know, Zach, the White House made this announcement clearly months in advance of really anyone actually seeing their loans forgiven as part of this. What does this tell us about the importance of the issue to Biden in a crucial election year? Some of this relief could come as early as this fall, which was a bit of a surprise, but there are still a lot of unknowns here. The regulation isn't set to go into effect entirely until at least early July of next year. But because student loans are a top issue for voters, Biden is clearly keen on getting this through as soon as possible. And recent polling and research shows it wins him points with younger voters and with Democrats. This election is likely going to come down to hundreds of thousands of votes in key states like Wisconsin and Arizona, which are places that Biden and the vice president are campaigning on this exact issue this week. Whether all of this sways things with voters in those specific states is an open question. All right, Zach Shermley covers education and breaking news for USA Today. Thank you, Zach. Thanks for having me. UConn are men's college basketball champions again. The Huskies beat Purdue last night 75-60 to to become the first men's team to win back-to-back championships since Florida in 2006 and 2007. To do so, they had to overcome another big night from Purdue center Zach Eady, just the third player in NCAA men's history to be named the Naismith Player of the Year multiple times. The Huskies next year will try to become the first team to win three in a row since UCLA won seven in a row in the late 60s and early 70s. You can read more from USA Today Sports. Americans shared a powerful moment yesterday as millions looked up and saw the total solar eclipse. For more from the rare events, including some stunning photos, we have a link in today's show notes. Thanks for listening to the excerpt. You can get the pod wherever you get your audio. And if you're on a smart speaker, just ask for the excerpt. I'm Taylor Wilson, back tomorrow with more of the excerpt from USA Today.